Hey, what's up, gang? Larry here from Snake River Fly, long time no see. As you guys know, we've been kind of busy in the middle of a remodel this spring. And then, of course, it's been fishing season. But anyhow, hope everybody's having a good one out there. Uh, just getting ready to tie up a pattern that um, kind of, you know, is in, uh, it's that time of year. You know, we've kind of gone through our major hatches, you know, at least on the snake um south fork henry spork all that stuff but almost everywhere kind of gone through our hatches kind of waiting for some hoppers so it's a cool time to you know start throwing some streamers uh, on our tail waters and a lot of tail waters you know you start getting water drops because right now this time of year because uh you know they're done irrigating out here in the west and um anyway we start seeing some water drops and what that does for us um is we get a minnow hatch you know all these fish that have been living up you know in the in the 10 inch water and even the four inch water up in the flood zones and stuff um you know now that water is not there so they're kind of forced to to go swim with the sharks if you will anyway we call it the minnow hatch you know for years and years and years one of our favorites you know i mean there's a bunch of streamers we fish but you know the double bunny um developed years and years ago for the snake or the, the jackson hole one fly i believe yeah, I guess a Sanchez bug back in the day, him and Carter Andrews wrecked the one fly with this with this thing. I think so bad for three years in a row that that they finally made him quit throwing this thing. And here we are, you know, 30 years later, and it's still a great producer for us. I like fishing these on sink tips. Um, we can also fish them on long leaders with float lines out of a drift boat into pocket water. Vertical jigging, as, as Kelly would say that I invented, or me and Jason or something but anyway just fishing dry lines with a weighted bug dropping them in quick in those zones looking for the big bite but yeah double bunnies a uh, rabbit strip bug that's that's glued together with fabric um glue and pretty simple one to tie this one that you know they've added uh, a couple uh fins and, and a little bit of gill work on there which we like a lot this bug moves a ton stays together well with the with the fabric glue and anyway, um, we're going to show you our version of it with uh, Techno Bunny. And uh, this is one we've just been tying up for uh, fishing this weekend. Anyway, um, here we go. This is a little rainbow trout. Get a lot of, we fish a lot of olive um, gray and white or olive and white uh, double bunnies and streamers this time of year. So here's our Techno Double Bunny in, um, I believe this color is called gray olive. And we're going to do that with some white techno. And then uh, we're going to establish some cool glare, uh, gills, a little bit of flare for our gills with a new color of hydro hackle. This is light salmon flesh. We also have a dark salmon flesh. Well, darker, we've been tying a lot of stuff for folks heading to Alaska with that stuff. You know, and then if you wanted to do a cutty color, of course, you know, you could switch into the tan or any of the hydro or the techno bunny. Uh, colors that we have out there great combinations so here's the bug finished up and uh, let's go ahead and tie one for you of course on the old Renzetti Traveler and basically this is spawned off you know Clouser footprint which I do a lot of it's simple it's effective tends to keep the hook inverted we like that a lot we're going to uh, tie this one on a number four uh, the Kelly Gallup streamer hook We've just broken down 100 packs. Uh, these are from Montana Fly Company, which we carry in shop now. Um, and I believe we'll have them on the site pretty quick. But a good straight shanked hook. Uh, I like them just a touch shorter, and I like the shape of this one a little better. But in a pinch, you know, or what I would tie prior to this hook, I would probably tie that on this, this one of our favorite hooks, this Moonlit Number 4 Barbless is a, is a killer hook it's a touch longer though i'm not really necessarily looking for that length right now um we're gonna tie with our favorite semper fly flat waxed this is white six aught go ahead and build a deep good thread base and uh you know years ago i was lucky enough to watch bob clauser i think at a denver show you know go through an hour and a half clauser and there's a reason he does it. I think most of us miss the point. We try to put our eyes too far forward. I know you've heard that elsewhere. Um, but it really is true. You'll get a better swimming bug if you'll, you know, maybe come back that third or so. Um, where you're going to put your eyes. And then what Bob would do, and I, and, and I do too, is you're going to build a bump of thread right there. You know, 
pretty good little ball of thread uh, right there. And then you're just gonna put that medium clouser eye. This is a painted lead eye yeah, in medium. We use the white one for the rainbow trout. If I was gonna do a you know, a little brown trout or whatever, I would do that on a, you know, yellow or change eyes. Anyway, a really inexpensive and awesome way to get some weight on your streamer. And um, looks great, you know, makes it look like a, a fish because you got those eyeballs on there and such. So I'm gonna start by attaching that with, I'm holding it sideways. And I'm gonna start with a bunch of wraps from the front on my side to the back on there. Um, let's say 10. And you're gonna come from behind on my side and out front on the other side and just wait until we get those eyes perpendicular to the shank. But you can see I'm quite a ways back on this hook. Okay, I'm not right up here in the gap like you see a lot of these bugs tied. I'm not looking for a jigging action. I'm looking for more of a slight dive or level swimming uh, fly. So now that I've got them perpendicular, I go ahead and put some wraps underneath these lead eyes. That's just gonna bind all that thread together that I already put on there with my X wraps and make it a little tighter. It's worth putting the extra time in and the extra thread on this, on, put, on attaching your eyes. It's worth putting the extra time and effort in thread attaching your eyes so you have a clean base. You know, the Semper has 200 yards, so you're not gonna run out. Once I get those eyes on there, I'm going to go ahead and set them with some head cement. You know, taking the time to tie the bug, make it durable. Okay, we've got our base built. Now we're going to come to the back of the straight part of the hook shank. And we're going to take our white techno. And I've just pulled off like six, eight inches of techno in white. And then I picked a spot where I want the length of my bug to be out the back and I'm just gonna divide those. A lot easier than dividing rabbit strip. This stuff will divide and give you a clean spot to tie in. Right on top of the shank, I'm gonna place that gap. I'm gonna do a loose wrap over, make sure it's coming right out the top of the shank, which will be the bottom of the fly when we're done. It's like all clousers. And I'll get four or five good tight wraps in here and then I'll fold that material back and just give a couple extra wraps on there to make sure we're really bound in. And these are gonna be bouncing around in the rocks and getting ripped up by great big piggy hoggy browns uh, with big, huge mega teeth. So we're gonna need that fly to be durable. <laughs> okay, we've got a tail out there on the bottom, the top, which is gonna be the bottom. Now I'm just gonna palmer my techno forward and comb it back as I go. I'm gonna come up right to a little bit behind the clouser eyes. Just combing it as I go, just preen it back. Techno is a really rad material in the fact that it holds its shape really well and it doesn't absorb a lot of water, okay? The, the cool thing about that is this fly doesn't become super duper water saturated when you're trying to cast it. So you can pluck this thing out of a boat um, or make a quick one shot without it holding a ton of water. That's why our saltwater friends like it so much. So now that I've got my uh, techno right up, I left a little gap behind the eyes there. I'm just gonna go ahead and secure it. Shakira. And like I said, since this tends to run a little bit more perpendicular to the, to the hide, um, it's a little easier to tie in. You don't trap as many fibers. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that tag end. That's gonna finish up our throat, leave it forward. And now I'm gonna go ahead and take some of our um, light salmon flesh hydro. You could use red for this, you could use whatever, but this is just kind of the color of, of rainbow trout minnow that, that we fish around here. And I went ahead and Peeled a little bit off just like you would on a feather. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tie this in on the bottom, right behind my eyes. This is gonna form our gills, or a little flash, a little trigger point. Kelly talks a lot about trigger points in flies. Um, a little bit of flash in here is, is definitely a good trigger point to get a fish 
um, interested from a distance. So I'm just going to do one, probably two wraps um, of our light salmon hydro in there. Remember I've left, excuse me, I'm juggling a bit. I left that hanging out the front without cutting it. You could also trim that off and retie it. It's not that big a deal. I just banging out a bunch of these tonight to go fishing um, next few days. So get some good securing wraps behind the hydro and then I'll pull it back like so on a lot of these body wraps from Snake River Fly from us and bend it back over it and, and tie a couple wraps there. Building that durable fly for Mega Trout Tronic. Okay, we've trimmed our uh, hydro hackle in here off and we've still got our techno in front. Did those securing wraps. Now I'll just jump my thread in between the eyes um, on the top, which will be the bottom forward. Excuse me. Like so. And now I'm going to do a couple wraps in front of that with that same piece of techno. And you can build these heads as full as you want. I'm going kind of sparse on these. I'm um, just making kind of a little narrow minnow. So I'll come one wrap behind and then one in between. Comb it back. Starting on my side, going to your side. Same thing the other way, just like the X wraps on the thread. And then hopefully we saved enough to get, you know, one good wrap in front. Probably could have used just a little bit more to make it easier on a fella, but that's okay. I'm not worried about building a super fat head on these, the minnows, you know, that were the bait fish were imitating those little rainbows. They have a pretty narrow head. Um, if I wanted to fatten one up, I would um, have made it fuller and wrapped through there a little bit more. And here's kind of a look at a little, I don't know, brown trout minnow that's got some more wraps on the front. So you can do that and, you know, then trim it as you want to get a cool shape. Maybe we'll do that at the end of the video, finish trimming that one. <coughs> okay, so we've got our techno wrapped in on the bottom, tied it off, got it secured. Now I'll go ahead and flip this vise over. And now I'll just divide this techno bunny a bit with the tip of my scissors. It divides pretty easy. Same thing with the hydro, just kind of get it out of the way because we're gonna lay another strip of techno right through here. Okay, so just part the Red Sea or the white belly. Like so. I'm being a little bit more detailed because we're shooting our CS video. Normally I wouldn't even worry about all that stuff. It's all gonna blend. Okay, so there's your little prep right there. Now we're gonna take our, our um, olive, our gray olive techno, and we're gonna measure that out to where it's just a little bit longer than the back of this, or than the white. We're gonna measure it out so it's a touch longer. And then I'm gonna find that point and I'm gonna pierce the tip of the hook through there. So I'm just gonna mark that, divide the fibers, Find the center of that guy and just poke it right through the center. Now I'll just undo the hook, put that back there and reattach or re, re uh, load my hook into the vise. Okay, so now we've got our tail. It's going to be longer than the belly. And now we're going to make that cool dorsal coloration uh, that the double bunny is legendary for. And I'm just going to kind of preen this stuff back. My thread's waiting right here for me at the front. And uh, I like leaving a little extra techno on the hide right there, just, you know, so I get kind of a cool forehead because nobody likes a fly with a sloping forehead. I don't know. Anyway, loose wrap over this stuff, the hide or the techno, a couple loose wraps to get that secured. She is playing in the background. Shakira, mm -hmm. Shakira, Shakira. We love Shakira. Um, 
Same thing with all these body wraps. It's thin enough base. You know, the core on this stuff's really narrow that I can fold it back and really lock it in to make sure that I've got a, a nice durable fly. Like I said, Carter and, and, and I think Sanchez, well, Carter was fishing the one fly, um, guiding it, I believe, probably fishing it too back in the day, out of our lodge, Lodge of Palisades Creek. And I'm referring to Carter Andrews, Scott Sanchez. Um, and they did so well in this double bunny um, fly, the original, that they banned it. You still can't fish uh, that kind of fly in the one fly. <laughs> Cheating. Okay, let's go ahead and finish off my head. However you like to do it. Um, cool thing about this versus uh, zonker strips or, or rabbit is it doesn't build as much bulk and you don't end up with that great big bulky head. And drop my whip finisher right there. So let's whip finish this bad boy off. Like nothing ever happened. Look at that. Just perfect. Just like Davy McFowl. Just right there. Put a happy little whip right in that guy. Yep. Screw it. Put a few more. 132. How many is that? I quit. I lost. Yeah. I thought you had the clicker. Okay. Got ourselves a nice little helmet of thread built on this guy. 314 whip finishes in this one. Just because I know I'm going to toss it into a tree right off the get-go. Man, I'm wore out. Okay. Now, we're going to go ahead and attach or glue together or whatever you want to call it our bottom piece of techno to our top piece of techno. And to do that, we're going to take some of our favorite. Trust the bish. Trust the bish. Hair or tear mender. Um, this stuff is crazy. You can fix anything with it if it's fabric. Um, two fluid ounce bottles is what we have in here. A little goes a long ways. And so what I like to do is I'll just take like my cardboard insert off of some packaging material and I'll put a little, just a little drop on there because you're not going to use much. And if you do get this stuff spilled on you, it dries up just like a bug. Er, not a bugger, a booger. So just a little bit on that uh, piece of cardboard there. And then I like using a toothpick, like so. And we'll just go ahead and just hit the base of that core. On the double bunnies, a little trickier because the hair is finer on that on that double bunny, and it's I don't know it can be really tough to try with the with the rabbit it can be really tough to do this process. So a lot of people hate tying these, but it's a little easier with this synthetic techno um, because it absorbs the tear mender a little better and it doesn't go all over the place. And uh, just go ahead and I put that on one side. I don't have to put it on the other, but like I said, I like a pretty durable bug, so. And I got a little extra of the goo on there. I'll do this, I'll, do, I'll glue all these bugs together in one batch, usually, at the end. So I'll just take those two and put them together like so. Make sure that you're running core to core. Hush, hush, core to core. And bring them together. Like so, stuff sticks pretty instant. And just do a little bit of a comb job on the front. On this guy, once it gets wet, that's going to form the shape we're looking for. And uh, there you go. You've got yourself a techno bunny, or a techno double bunny. Ow, sharp hook. I always bleed every freaking video. And now, like I said, I'm um, on that other one that we were tying earlier. If you wanted to shape this or build a bulkier head on these, this is a little brown trout or something that I tied up. Um, we've got a fuller head on this guy, and I'll just come in, and, and you can trim these up and get, you know, the shape of head you're looking for. If you're looking for a boogeyman or if you're looking for, you know, a little slider head or whatever your favorite is, you can do that. And we'll just trim that a little bit. 
Less is usually more when you're trimming any pro any head, I think, deer hair or whatever. But you can trim those down and get that shape. Um, so there you go. There's our double techno bunny in uh, gray olive and white with a little bit of uh, light salmon flesh uh, hydro for our gills. And that's great for your minnow hatch that's happening this time of year or wherever you like to chuck the, the big stuff. So thanks for checking us out and we hope to be seeing more of you here in the near future now that we're done remodeling. And if you're in the neighborhood, stop by and say hi. Later.